Welcome back, class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. Um, I realized, I thought that I, we had finished test four, but let's just get it rid of the last four problems. So number 13. The price of a telephone was first increased by 10%, and then the new price was decreased by 25%. The final price was what percent of the initial price? So now they don't give us a value for how much it costs. So let's assume that we can pick a price and in this case of course we can we have to otherwise this problem gets pretty out of hand really quickly so let's say it costs a hundred dollars expensive phone but you know it's okay so first it was increased by ten percent ten percent of a hundred equals to ten so ten plus one hundred is equal to 110. Now, this new price was decreased by 25%. So 110 minus 25% of 110. Now, um, I'm since I don't have a calculator, I'm just gonna do it in my head and show you how. 25% um, of 100 is 25. 25% of 10 is 2.5. Well, actually, no. There you go. That's how you write it. 2.5. So 27.5 is 25% of 110. So that's a little trick to remember. So 110 minus 27.5 is equal to 82.5. Now, what is 82.5? Um, dollars compared to a hundred dollars well it's eighty two point five percent since we're using the number hundred and so that is choice number C now number fourteen let's get started um, oh I'm using the same color uh, no, doesn't happen very often uh, when the number W is the multiplied by four the result is the same as when 4 is added to W. What is the value of 3W? Okay, so 4 times W is the same as 4 plus W. So let's subtract W from both sides. So 3W equals to 4. Now you don't have to divide by 3 and then multiply by 3 again. You already found it. 3W is equal to 4. That's your correct answer. Most do, most of us would just go straight to a W equals because, you know, that's how our, what do I say, call it? That's how our brain is, like, designed to work. We have been doing, like, algebra so long. Oh, just find the bare value. We usually aren't asked to just find, you know, three times the bare value. So that's why that's towards the end. It's a pretty tough one at face value. So, number 15. The lengths of the sides of a right triangle are consecutive even integers, and the length of the shortest side is x. Which of the following equations could be used to find x? Alright, so the smallest side is x, and they say that each side, um, the lengths of the sides are consecutive even integers, since if x is the smallest, then the next even integer is x plus 2. Okay, because we already know that x is then an even number because it says consecutive even numbers. The next number after that would be x plus 2 plus 2 or x plus 4. And so, and so our values are x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. So when you look down, um, you can see a lot of squares involved. And this should be a hint that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of x. So what is the Pythagorean theorem? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we just plug these into the equation, then we get x squared plus x plus 2 whole squared is equal to x plus 4 whole squared. And that is equal to c. And so with that said, and the final question has to do with two variables. So if 
x is an integer greater than 1, and if y equals x plus 1 over x, which of the following must be true? Oh, I'm sorry, I was like, I... Anyways, x is an integer greater than 1, so x is greater than 1, it's not, it's an integer, and y is equal to x plus 1 over x. So, which of the following must be true? Let's look at the first property. y is not equal to x. Well, let's check it. Um, x has to be greater than 1, no matter what. So, the only way um, this could even be close to equaling y is if x were to equal uh, 0. But the thing is, you know, there's also the thing that 1 over 0 equals complex infinity. And that's another story, so we're not talking about that. x is greater than 1. So let any number we pick, y is going to be equal to the number. So let's pick a number 4 plus 1 over 4. And that will be equal to 4 times 1 over 4. If we pick the number 6, then y would be equal to 6 plus 1 over 6 which would be equal to 6 times 1 over 6. So you, you see where this is going. Like, y will always be greater than x. So the quality, the first quality is true. Let's look at the second quality. Uh, should they be called qualities? Uh, okay, so y is an integer. Now, again, this is entirely impossible because you're always going to be adding this, this fraction to the whole number. So it's impossible for y to be an integer. There's one way it could be an integer, which is if x equaled 1, then y would equal 2. But x is greater than 1, as the property is given here. Not x is equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 1. So we know that's false. So y is an integer. This is false. Now let's look at the final property. x times y is greater than x squared. Now, here's the thing. y is always greater than x. So x times x is surely definitely less than x times y. And we can, um, we know that y will always be greater by x. So if we divide both sides by x, and we can do that because x is never equal to 0, so x over y divided by x is greater than x squared over x, so y is greater than x. So we know that x times y will be greater than x times x. So we know that property is true. So our correct answers are i and 3, which is answer choice i and 3 i's, I guess. That's choice number d. So. That is the end of test number four. Um, I'm going to be starting test five in about a few minutes. <laughs> you guys might not see it today, but it will be done and ready to upload. So I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.